Bonjour et bienvenue à la vie avec Azan. Aujourd'hui, nous discuterons les admissions et les applications universitaires oh. durant le coronavirus. On y va? So, the first section you need to figure out is standardized testing. Now, as you all know, many colleges have made their policy test optional, meaning you are not required to submit an SAT or ACT score for your application to count. However, this does not mean that they are a test blind school. A test blind school will not consider your test scores even if you submit them. But a test optional school, especially if they are favorable scores, will consider them as they will match them towards your GPA. So if you have the opportunity to take standardized tests electronically or in person, and your top school is test optional, not test blind, and their acceptance rate is fairly low, then it might be in your best interest to take standardized tests. But make sure to just check the policies for your schools. Now, just know that even if you take a test, you will not be disadvantaged. This was only for your advantage. So if you have the opportunity to take a standardized test, go ahead and take it. A strong standardized test score will really stand out because most of your classes will be written as pass or fail on your transcript for 11th grade. And junior year is known as one of the most important years for college admissions. So this is one way to stand out of the crowd to find a way to do standardized testing even if you're not in the best environments. The next thing you want to do is try to figure out how standardized testing will um, sort of stand out compared to your um, extracurriculars and summer stuff. So as most people's summer plans have just gone to the water, no internships or summer programs or camps or anything, nothing is happening. Or So basically what you want to do is try to gather as much information you can for the university like try to figure out what you really did that stood out in your extracurriculars in junior year before schools closed. Another thing is try to figure out how your SAT scores really match up with your GPA and like how both of them will really raise your application in com compared to every other applicant. This summer or this admission cycle, the essay could not matter as like, it just couldn't matter more. Like, literally, this is your place to shine. Everyone is going to most likely pass their classes. And so one way to shine is your standardized test scores, but the other way is your essay and how well you do your application. I cannot stress this enough. You need to proofread your application, not just the essay, the application, your activity section, everything like those tiny supplemental two sentence things. You need to proofread everything and try to get as much information in the least amount of words possible. Make every word count. Don't put any fluff, just every meaningful word possible. Basically, each word you put should really have its own importance. If it doesn't, then just don't use it. It really needs to stand out compared to everyone else. So another thing is a lot of students will be tempted to write about how the coronavirus impacted their life, but I suggest you do not do that. Every college admission officer will be basically reading the same essay if you do that. So try to find something that really stands out for who you are. And if you need to tell the college admissions person, how coronavirus impacted you. The Common App this year will have a specific section, like there's a um, more info session. Now there'll be a specific section for natural disasters and COVID related um, impacts and stuff that you can talk about if that is deemed necessary. The next thing we're going to talk about is ways that you can demonstrate interest. So the number one way is sign up to virtual information sessions. Even though most people can't visit colleges now, 
if you sign up to these sessions, they track your interest level and um, you're more likely to get admitted if the college you know, tracks the stuff and uses it in its evaluation. This year, the colleges will also take into account to what your plans were. For example, if you plan to be on a, like a sports team, but your season got canceled, you need to still list that as an activity and the colleges will pretend that that still happened. Additionally, if you're about to be a camp counselor or do an internship or some sort of summer program or something like that, you need to still list that at least you got in or like you were about to do that and they will pretend that you did that. So everything is to your advantage. Another thing to keep in mind is that many schools will be eliminating early decision and early action admission types. So for example, early action is where you're simply just applying early. Early decision is you're applying early to one college and if you get in, then you do a binding agreement that you will go there, like no matter what. Um, and um, there's like this whole contract you have to sign and your counselors make you sign something else. And so you need to really thoroughly plan out your admission due dates and what applications your schools are offering. Another point to consider is that many schools will still require standardized testing. So you need to figure that out with your list and everything. Another important way that you can be involved in your community and is a good form of extracurricular activities is volunteer work. You could do volunteer work with, for example, in some sort of um, food kitchen or something. You can package um, like food and supplies for people in need as there are so many people in need right now every bit of help counts and if you can be a part of that that is something amazing to write on your application under the activity section and you could additionally talk about that in your college essay if that led to any growth for you or like some other impact for you um definitely consider those things and keep them in mind Another thing you could do right now is figure out your letters of recommendation. These will be even more important this year because colleges will have less resources to work with. And if a teacher that you did really well, well with can write a very good letter of recommendation for you, then I highly recommend you get that done. I personally got three letters of recommendation um, just because when my school required three, along with the counselor one. The counselor one is, I think, required by almost all schools, but an additional one or two additional ones or three additional ones, um, you really try to get at least one or two additional ones. They are so important, especially now. The next thing is we can talk about gap year. A gap year might be a great idea for you, but it might also be a bad idea. Like a good idea it could be is that you'll have time to like, you know, be in the normal cycle of admissions. You'll be a normal first class every, or at least new normal. But another thing to consider is if you take a gap year, it's so unpredictable to travel and find work right now that it might just be better to go to college. So there's like lots of um, merits and weaknesses to the idea of a gap year currently, like as in, in this situation. So this video is part of a series of college admissions and applications. Um, we will most likely be talking about this at least once a month until college and the admission cycle ends in around, uh, well, for most schools it ends in January, but some schools go up until March. So the goal is we'll be talking about this topic at least once a month. If you want more frequent videos about the topic, let me know in the comments below. So, j'espère que vous aimez cette vidéo. Um, S'il vous plaît, vous abonnez, partagez, commentez et adorez cette vidéo. À la prochaine vidéo. Au revoir.